Oh, hey. oh, everybody, welcome back. I've been playing around here with uh, my oscilloscope. I'm experimenting with uh, pulse width modulation, which I plan to use in that project that uh, I'm going to do with this bright LED. Having an oscilloscope is kind of handy when you're doing some of these projects to see exactly what's going on. Not all of us have access to an oscilloscope. I just got mine, and I'm learning how to use it. But for this particular uh, experiment, you don't need an oscilloscope to see what's going on. Would you believe you could do it with a deck of cards? Well, at least one anyway. Stick around. I'll show you how. Go ahead. Pick a card. Any card. In the first video of this series, you saw how we built up a circuit that would blink our Luxian LED. Now we want to modulate that light. Let's take a moment and talk about this term modulate. Modulation is the process of adding information to a signal, such as a radio signal. You've heard of FM before, as in FM radio. FM stands for frequency modulation. So the information that we're sending on that radio signal, audio for example, is actually carried by varying the frequency of the signal. You've also heard of AM or amplitude modulation. In this case it's the intensity or the amplitude of the signal that varies and that carries the information. So how are we going to go about modulating something like light from an LED? The Arduino library gives us two tools that we can work with. One is called Pulse Width Modulation, or PWM, and the other is the Tone function that allows us to generate tones of any frequency we want. We'll explore these two, but let's start first with PWM. Let's take a closer look at an Arduino Uno. Notice the markings next to digital pins 3, 5, 6, 9, 10, and 11. In addition to the regular digital input and digital output, these six pins can also be used to simulate analog output in the form of pulse width modulation. Let's take a quick look at what I have set up here. We'll come back to this guy later. But for now, I've got an Arduino running a real simple sketch to demonstrate PWM. I also have attached this rotary encoder you may recognize this from some other videos I've done. Now, I'm going to take this lead, which is connected to pin 9 on the Arduino. Remember, that's one of those special pins that will do PWM. And I'm going to connect it to the probe of my oscilloscope. And here's our PWM signal. We've got a nice square wave right here on the scope. Let's take a quick look at the sketch we're running here for this demonstration. I won't go into a lot of detail, but there's a couple things I'd like to draw your attention to. One is that I've set up a constant here in this line to represent pin 9, which is one of the PWM pins on the Arduino. And you can see here that I've just given it a name PWN pin. Simple enough. Right here I'm setting some values, so when I turn the knob on the rotary encoder, I'm going to increment in steps of plus 10 and minus 10. Instead of 1 at a time, we'll go 10 at a time. Then in setup routine, we use a common pin mode to set this pin up as an output. Also in setup, I write to the pin the value 128. Notice that this is an analog write, not a digital write. We'll talk about that more later. As the knob turns, we're changing a value called level, and we move it either up or down based on the direction that the knob turns. These next two lines simply keep us in range, so we don't go beyond 100 or below 0. The number we're using is supposed to represent a percentage. The Arduino's analog write function is expecting a value between 0 and 255. That's 256 different choices. In the start of function, you saw that I began with a value of 128. 128 is half of 256. In the PWM world, we talk about something called duty cycle. 
duty cycle, which is usually expressed as a percentage, represents what part of the time is the signal high versus what part of the time the signal is low. By picking the value 128, I initialize the duty cycle of my pulse width modulation at 50%. When I wrote my sketch, I chose to use decimal values between 0 and 100 values that would represent the percentage the duty cycle, but I needed to convert those to numbers between 0 and 255, which is part of the binary world of the Arduino. To do that, we'll take advantage of some simple 7th grade mathematics. And if any of you who are watching this happen to be my former algebra students who were always asking me, when will we ever use this stuff? Well, here it is which is what these top two lines do. They take our percentage and turn it into a value between 0 and 255. Then the analog write function takes that value and sends it to our PWM pin. The square wave you see here on the oscilloscope represents the output on pin 9. Watch as I walk the duty cycle up. Here we are at 10%, now 20%, here we are at 30, 40%, 50%, 60%. We just slowly increase the duty cycle with our rotary encoder, and now we have a 90% duty cycle. Notice here that our square wave has a frequency of 490 hertz. It's interesting to note that the frequency of the Arduino's pulse width modulation is always 490 hertz. Regardless of the duty cycle, it could be 30%, 40%, 80%, the frequency is always 490 hertz. Okay, so what if you don't have an oscilloscope? That's where this guy comes in. To demonstrate pulse width modulation without a lot of fancy electronic equipment, we'll switch back to our little Luxion red LED. This will be fun. We're going to play in the dark. Notice the reflection of the light on the playing card as I flap it up and down. You can see it better when I freeze the frame. Do you see the red and black bands on the image? This represents the 10% duty cycle that we saw on our oscilloscope. But wait a minute. Shouldn't it be the other way around? Shouldn't the red bands be small and the black bands be large? No, in our circuit, that's the opposite. When our PWN signal goes high, that puts 5 volts on the reference pin of the buck puck. When the reference pin goes high, the LED goes off. That's why the bands of light are the opposite of the graph we saw on the oscilloscope. Now look at the 20% duty cycle. The black bands are just a little bit wider. Watch as we gradually increase the duty cycle here. You'll see the bands of light and dark change their relative width. As we reach 80 and 90% duty cycle, the LED starts to dim, and when we get to 100, it goes out completely. <laughs> that was fun! With a playing card! I hope you try it yourself. I put together a sequence of stills to form an animated GIF. Take a look at it here. Well, there you have my attempt to explain pulse width modulation. I hope it was helpful. Now it's time to experiment with the Arduino's tone function. It varies in two ways from PWM. Let's take a look. Let's make a few changes to this sketch here. I think what I'd like to do is change this variable, this PWM pin. We'll give it a different name for this. Change that to, how about, my tone replace all of those. We'll still use pin 9. We were turning our knob, we were going in steps of 10, and I'm going to put it back to steps of 1. Right here, this 10. Now we'll go down and uh, take a look at where we were putting out our analog right. We won't do that. Instead, we'll just use the tone command 
and then it wants a frequency that we put in here and I'm going to start it out at a 440 Hertz 440 Hertz is the middle A on a keyboard on a piano it's a nice tone to start with and I'm going to put the number four in here as a starting level and I'm going to take this number as we increment and multiply it times 110 so that we'll have tones that are all related to this 440 you'll see how that works here in a minute and when our knob is turned we change the state of the pin the level will change right here I'm not sure if I need to worry about going over a hundred right now because I don't think it'll go that far I'll leave the zero in so that it can't go below zero in fact we might want to make it one we don't want to go below one and then uh, we won't need to do any algebra this time here well no we do we're gonna say that the value is equal to whatever our level is times 110 and then down here I've been printing things that we weren't even looking at on the monitor but that's okay so we'll now put um, tone in here and the value there so it'll go out pin 9 on the frequency that we come up with so we'll upload that to our Arduino and give it a try of course it didn't like that because I should have spelled tone with a lowercase t and of course I would have should have noticed that the color changes when you get it right so we'll upload a second time see if it works this time and I think it's gonna go very good we'll see what we get on the oscilloscope okay let's have a look here we've got our square wave once again it looks a lot like what it did when we were doing PWM. Here's our frequency up here at 440 hertz. I'll take the knob and I will turn it up. There's 550, 660. I'll just crank this up. Notice the difference here. The duty cycle is always 50%. No matter what frequency we choose, here's 200, well this one's 330, we'll go to 220, the duty cycle is still 50%. And if we crank it way up to a higher frequency, we're up here over 3 kilohertz, the duty cycle is still 50%. These are audio frequencies, let's listen to them. Okay, I've been messing around with a bunch of parts here. I wanted to find a capacitor that would pass the audio through to the speaker without just completely destroying our square wave on the scope. I found one that comes close. You can see our square wave is not as clean as it was and that's a function of putting a, the coil of a speaker into the circuit and a capacitor. Well, let's turn our knob. So we can see what's going on here with the tone function. The takeaway from these experiments is that when we use pulse width modulation, PWM, we vary the duty cycle, but the frequency remains the same. It was 490 hertz. When we switch over to the tone function with the Arduino library, we find that the duty cycle stays the same. It's always 50% but the frequency change. These two experiments have been interesting. I've learned a lot and I hope you've learned something as well. I think having tried both methods that I'm going to go with the tone function and see what we can do with that. So the next phase of this project will be to work on the other end. How are we going to receive that light? And to do that we're going to experiment with photodiodes. So you probably want to join us for the next video. I'll look forward to seeing you then. And of course, all of us YouTube providers really appreciate it when you guys click that little like button right down here. And you can subscribe and share. All those things help.